Isaac Wade, Doctor of Pharmacy. In this video, I want to talk about a new or relatively new hair loss product called Spectral DNC-N. And this hair loss product, I've been getting a lot of advertisements for this hair loss product on my social media for some reason, and it's really been bothering me. And it's been bothering me because of some of the claims that uh, DS Laboratories, which is the company that makes this product, has been making about their product. And the, the first claim is that this product is supposedly safer than topical minoxidil. And the second claim is that this product is supposedly more efficacious than topical minoxidil. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys about why I think these claims are bogus, why I think it's a little bit misleading. And to do this, we're gonna be taking a very close look at the clinical literature, both to support this particular product, and then we're also gonna be taking at the clinical literature that supports the use of topical minoxidil for treating hair loss. So if you guys like this type of content, feel free to like and subscribe, and let's get into the video. So if you guys don't know, Spectral DNC-N is a new hair loss product that contains a variety of different ingredients that supposedly work through different mechanisms of action to treat male pattern hair loss and female pattern hair loss. But the heavy lifter in this particular product, right, the molecule that is supposed to do the most work is a molecule called ninoxidil. Now, ninoxidil is like minoxidil, but it's a little bit smaller. It's lacking one carbon atom, okay? You can take a look at the chemical structures here, but they're pretty much almost the same. The thing is, the company claims that this lack of a carbon atom makes their molecule smaller, and the smaller side leads to greater bioavailability. So first of all, I would like to see this claim validated in some kind of pharmacokinetic study. And second of all, I do not think increased bioavailability with a molecule that has not been tested is a good idea. Because what bioavailability means is that the molecule is able to enter into your bloodstream and travel all over your body, which is an effect that you might not want to have with a topical hair loss medication. So moving on, let's take a look at some of the clinical studies that support the use of ninoxidil when it comes to treating pattern hair loss. I looked at their website. It looks like they have three different clinical studies to support the safety and efficacy of their product. However, these clinical studies are very flawed, and I'm just going to quickly outline some of the biggest flaws that I see with these studies. The first major flaw is that it's unclear if some of these studies are peer-reviewed. One of their studies I can find in a peer-reviewed medical journal. It's been published, but the other two studies, it does not look like they have been published in a peer-reviewed journal, and therefore, I'm, it's uncertain if these studies have been peer-reviewed. When it comes to products that are being developed to market so that the better the scientific outcomes, the better the safety outcomes, the better the efficacy outcomes, the more sales they can make, in that case, there's definitely a bias there. The researchers are definitely inclined to have positive safety outcomes and positive efficacy outcomes, and therefore the purpose of a peer review is supposed to offset some of that bias. In the case of minoxidil, all of the studies that support minoxidil have been peer-reviewed. In addition, they have been reviewed by the FDA, and they have been granted market authorization for the indication of treating male pattern hair loss and female pattern hair loss. So these studies have really been looked at very closely. They've been examined very closely, and the um, experts at the FDA have determined that there has been no funny business going on with the minoxidil studies. The next issue that I have with the uh, DS Laboratories product clinical studies has to do with sample size. So when it comes to medical research, obviously a greater sample size leads to more convincing results. And the problem with DS laboratory studies is that all of the sample sizes are fairly small. One study was done in 49 individuals and the other two studies were done in less than 30 individuals. The study that was done in 49 individuals was done exclusively in women which also means that unfortunately you cannot look at the results from this study and you can't apply them to men. If you want to know if a product works in men, you have to study it in men. And therefore, um, although the efficacy outcomes and the safety outcomes were fairly positive in that study, you wouldn't be able to translate them to men. In contrast, minoxidil has been studied in thousands of men and hundreds of women over decades of time in double-blind randomized placebo control trials. Next, let's move on to the control group. So when, it, when you're looking at an intervention and you're trying to determine if an intervention is efficacious, what you need is something called a control group or a placebo group because the placebo effect is a really big problem in these types of studies. For example, if I gave someone jello and I told them that this jello would cause hair growth, and then I asked the individual later if they thought that they had hair growth, a lot of the time the person applying the jello would believe that they did indeed have hair growth. 
And for that reason, it's really important to have a placebo group in your trial in order to um, control for that placebo effect. Unfortunately, when it comes to the uh, study that was done by DS Laboratories, you know, those three clinical trials, none of them had control groups, which is very concerning in my opinion. If you take a look at minoxidil, on the other hand, all of minoxidil studies have been double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials. They did have control groups, they did have placebo groups, and they did control for the placebo effect. So really, I could continue, you know, knocking and just picking apart these studies all day, but I'm just going to stop because it, this has become fairly boring, to be honest. And I'm going to move on and let's investigate some of the claims that DS Laboratory has been making in their marketing campaign which in my opinion is probably the most concerning thing about their product. So the first claim that they made is that their product is safer than minoxidil. Specifically, they say that their product has zero side effects. And if you know anything about pharmaceuticals, you know that this claim is ludicrous. There is absolutely no pharmaceutical in existence that does not have side effects. And uh, therefore, I believe that this claim is highly misleading. I think the truth is that when it comes to minoxidil, minoxidil has been studied adequately to the point where we have a very good understanding of the safety profile, what kind of side effects to expect, the frequency of side effects um, when it comes to minoxidil. But on the other hand, with uh, the DS Laboratories product, this product has not been studied adequately. And we really do not have a good understanding of what types of side effects to expect. I guarantee that if you expose enough individuals to the DS Laboratories product over an extended period of time, you'd find some more you know, rare, less frequent side effects start to come out of the woodwork. In addition, in their study that was done in women, they actually did have some side effects that were reported, specifically erythema and also dryness as well. So in my opinion, this statement is not only misleading, it's also untrue. When it comes to safety, another concern that I have has to do with bioavailability, okay? So this product advertises that due to its smaller uh, molecular mass, it penetrates deeper into the scalp and it becomes more bioavailable. And then this leads to improvements in efficacy. So perhaps it leads to improvements in efficacy, but I believe that there's a trade-off when it comes to safety then. Because when it comes to a molecule like ninoxidil, ninoxidil, from my understanding, has not been studied in the context of systemic um, exposure, right? No one takes oral ninoxidil to treat blood pressure the way that people take minoxidil for, and therefore we really don't have a very good understanding of the safety profile of ninoxidil if it does get into your bloodstream. On the other hand, when it comes to minoxidil, minoxidil has been studied in the context of systemic exposure. I have patients that take oral minoxidil for treating blood pressure or various cardiovascular conditions, and therefore if minoxidil gets into your bloodstream, we kind of know what to expect. So let me just quickly talk about efficacy now. So I've got a couple problems with efficacy. Um, the first problem is that they claim that their product is more efficacious than minoxidil in terms of the areas of the head that it works, okay? So minoxidil has only been granted FDA approval for treating hair loss that happens at the vertex. And then minoxidil states that they are able to treat both hair loss at the vertex and also hair loss at the hairline. And my issue with this statement is that based on all of the clinical studies that I've read, I have not seen any efficacy outcomes looking specifically at hair growth at the hairline. In addition, I don't think this is a fair comparison because minoxidil has an FDA indication for treating male pattern hair loss at the vertex, whereas nanoxidil does not have an FDA indication for treating hair loss at any part of the head. So pretty much because of that FDA indication, we can be confident almost beyond a reasonable doubt that minoxidil in fact does help to treat hair loss at the vertex, whereas with nanoxidil and specifically the product by DS Laboratories, there really is not enough clinical evidence to, uh, to be completely confident that this product treats hair loss at the vertex or at the hairline. And then we also can't be completely confident that this uh, product is safe either. That pretty much concludes all of the thoughts that I have about uh, ninoxidil and about the product by DS Laboratories. I apologize for this negative video. I usually, you know, don't try to be negative, but um, I've just been getting spammed by this product in my newsfeed on all my social medias, probably because I've made a video recently about hair loss. And um, it just, every every time I see that ad of where it's comparing ninoxidil to minoxidil, it just boils my blood and I had to make this video. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you agreed with me, let me know below. If you disagreed with me, more, uh, more importantly, let me know below. I know that I'm not right 100% of the time. I don't think anyone is. I'm always learning new things. And so let me know if anything that I said sounds wrong or, in, or uninformed. 
and I'd be really happy to, to uh, you know, talk to you about that. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.